Hey guys, this is Christopher, and in this video I'm going to show you how to cut straight diameters, straight shoulders, and angled tapers and chamfers on the lathe. So when you're cutting straight diameters and straight shoulders, you'll most likely be using these two knobs. Um, one for the z-axis and the other for the x-axis. On most lathes, your x-axis knob here is going to be indexed in thousandths of an inch, so you know how far you're traveling. But a lot of the time, your z-axis knob won't have any dial on it, so you won't know how far you're traveling unless you use an indicator. This is a plunger dial indicator, and each of these lines along the rim represent one thousandth of an inch. So if you mount your indicator um, to your lathe like this, then using your z-axis knob, you can push it in and out and use your reading from the indicator instead of reading on your dial on your knob. But if your z-axis doesn't have dialing and you don't have a dial indicator like this, there's still one more way you can measure your z-axis movement using this, which is the compound rest. This last knob here on your compound rest will most likely have thousandths of an inch marked on it, just like your x-axis does. It's not facing in the same direction as the z-axis all the time, because this whole assembly here can actually rotate around. But you can use it like your z-axis. Um, it doesn't have as much travel. It can't move quite as far. It might only have an inch or two of travel, but you can use it as the z-axis. If you're using the z-axis knob here on the bottom, you can normally assume that it runs parallel to the axis of rotation right here. But if you're using the compound rest, because it can rotate, you can't necessarily assume that it's straight. So you need to check it with a square based on um, any of these lines here that are on your x-axis movement. Now if I place my square between my compound rest and my x-axis movement, which is the crossfeed, um, I can feel that it wiggles a little bit, which means it's not perfectly 90 degrees. So to fix this, we're going to have to rotate the compound rest a little bit in one of these directions. Every lathe is going to be a little bit different on how you adjust the compound rest, but on mine I have to almost completely unscrew the compound rest knob and then right here you'll see two screws are revealed. If you loosen those then you should be able to rotate this freely. Down at the bottom here there might be a dial that has degree markings so you could just set it to zero but normally that's not going to be as accurate as a square is going to be. So I'm just going to line it up um, on my cross slide and then rotate this so that it fits perfectly in the square and then tighten these back up again. Now that my compound rest is squared to my x-axis, I can use it in place of the z-axis knob. Now with our axes in place, we can set our tool position. You're going to want to use a tool with a tip that's less than 90 degrees so that it can get into the corner with some clearance. And you're going to want it to be um, angled so that there's clearance on both the side of your tool and the front of your tool. Of course, before we do any other turning, we're going to want to face the end of our stock here. After you're done facing your stock, regardless of whether you're using your compound rest or your regular z-axis knob, you're going to want to zero out the knob or the indicator so that you know that that is your starting point. Normally you can zero your dials by holding the handle 
on your knob in place while rotating the indexed portion of the knob to the zero position. Now we're going to also have to zero out our x-axis dial. So to do that we're going to spin um, our chuck and then feed in until we just barely touch the edge of our part and zero our x position there. Now you can hear that it touched the edge of our part and you can see that there's a little shiny spot where it's just starting to cut. So zero your X position there. Here I'm holding the knob in place while I turn the indexed portion straight to zero. Now I know that is our starting point and we have our X set along with our Z set. Now with our axes both set to zero we're just about ready to start cutting this piece. This piece of metal is a three-quarter inch um, diameter piece of steel and the cut that I'm going to be making on it will be a quarter inch long and it will take the diameter from three quarters of an inch to eleven sixteenths which means we'll have to decrease the diameter by one sixteenth of an inch. So that means your x-axis is going to decrease by one sixteenth of an inch but it will vary um, some lathes have the increments on your dial on the x-axis with respect to the diameter and some have with respect to the radius so you need to make sure you know what type um, you have for me um, it's res with respect to the radius which means if it's a sixteenth inch smaller than my original diameter then I need to feed in a 30 seconds um, into my part so that it feeds in a sixteenth total on both sides. So at zero, instead of taking all um, 31 thousandths in one pass, I'm going to split it into a couple because um, with the tool that I'm using and this lathe, it can't handle um, all of that at once. So I'm going to do 10 thousandths at a time. So I'll feed 10 thousandths in um, and turn on my spindle and make a cut that is not quite a quarter of an inch deep. I'm only going to go uh, 5 thousandths less than what I want. So I'll make it 0.245 inches in from the zero point here on my face. Now I've made my first pass, which is 10 thousandths deep and 245 thousandths long. I'm going to make two more passes. Um, the next one will be another 10 thousandths, and then the one after that is going to be 11 to get my 31 thousandths, or 1 32nd of an inch. The last pass I take is going to be the full 250 thousandths, and then I'm going to back out to clean up this edge and that edge there is going to be the shoulder. Now we have um, the full 30 second depth here um, and the full 250 thousandth uh, length here. And you can measure this with um, some calipers or micrometers and check and make sure it's the right size. Um, if it's not, you can cut deeper and you're probably going to want to check it before you make your last pass just to make sure that your last pass is the right size. Um, but that is how you make a straight cut um, with a straight shoulder. Um, it's The shoulder right here isn't very big. If you're going to do a bigger pass um, with a thicker depth, 
the shoulder is going to matter a lot more. But on this one, um, since it's so small, the shoulder um, feeding out isn't going to cut very much material off to form that shoulder. Now that we have this straight diameter and shoulder, I'm going to adjust the compound rest again so that we can cut a taper on the end of this. So with these two screws loosened up again, I'm going to use the 45 degree side on my square to put this at a 45 degree angle. Again, you could just use the indexing on the front of your compound rest, but I think this is a little more accurate. Now that we rotated our compound rest, our tool is in the wrong position. Um, it won't cut as well this way. So if we change it um, so that it, the point is facing more squarely to the angle we're going to put on, then it will cut better. So bring this around so that it is close to the corner that we're going to be tapering. And now using our compound rest, we can feed at an angle on here. I'm not going to measure the chamfer I'm gonna put on here, um, but you could measure it in either direction, the Z or the X. Um, but this is just going to be um, an edge brank chamfer, uh, not a precise taper. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Um, but you can feed in either by putting Z in this direction or X in that direction. Either way will feed in on the taper. Now I've got a little 45 on the end of that diameter that we created. But like always, we have to make sure we file all of the burrs off. Um, there's some on basically every edge that we've cut. Now I've gotten rid of all of the burrs and we have our straight shoulder and diameter along with a taper or a chamfer on the end. So here's our finished product. Um, the surface finish isn't that great. Um, you can change that by changing the speed or feed that you're cutting at. But we have our step on the diameter and we have the little chamfer or the taper on the edge. So you can see that even when you're just cutting straights in either direction, there's a lot of side of time that can go into making sure that um, your axes are straight and that your measurements are accurate.